Okay, hello YouTube, this is Marauders here and uh, this here is a new fight board I made. I'll call it the tournament edition fight board because uh, it's now tournament legal because there's only one button on the on the for up now because uh, that seems to be what the FGC says is more legal. Um, SOCD, well the chip supports it. That's all I'll say. Uh, and of course, in order to play Street Fighter 6 a bit better, I decided to move the L3 and R3 buttons down so that I can actually hit it with my thumb, with my left thumb as well, so we have maximum utilization of all the buttons. Uh, and this here is on, a, I was called it a prototype surface, so there are some things that I'm going to do to like clean it up. I'm going to move it to the final acrylic board and uh, I'm going to clean up the wires a bit. And uh, I thought I would just record down some thoughts about making this fight board here in this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and release the existing wires from the current chip. I've already taken a photo of how the wires go, so that will, it will make it easier for putting it back later okay so all the wires have been unscrewed so I'm just gonna take let's take the chip out now okay I'm just gonna pop it out of the holder yeah we have the blue tag here so in case you don't know what this stuff is. This is called blue tag, uh, blue tag, tack it, uh, green stuff. Um, it's basically an office supply, which is basically very sticky uh, modeling clay or plasticine. Or it's basically green clay that is tacky and sticky, so you can use them to hold things down. So the main thing I use this stuff to secure the things around is because I was lazy and just wanted a quick and simple way to uh, to be able to like secure stuff onto the board and move them around if I have to and you'll be surprised because with a leverless unlike a joystick when the force of just pushing buttons you can very easily secure things down with something like this and uh, they'll just stay in place and the the interesting thing that I found is that sometimes you can get this stuff which, which is uh, super strong. So, uh, I mean relatively strong. So, this, from this, this one that I got, the Batafix Pro Power, it, it actually has very strong holding power. So, uh, that actually works much better than the usual green stuff. Okay, let's talk about the chip that I'm using. So this is a Raspberry Pi Pico, uh, I think they call it MCU, uh, microcontroller unit, or is it an SOC? Okay, I always get that mixed up. So anyway, this is a Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, the one I'm using is not the normal Raspberry Pi Pico that you might have seen. The normal one is this. So this is the Raspberry Pi Pico from the Raspberry Foundation. Uh, this is a slightly more different version. The pin layout, the GPIO pins are different. And most importantly, this one uses a USB-C port while the original one uses a micro A. So this one is just more convenient for using cables and connecting to it. So I decided to pick up this one instead. Now, the firmware I'm using, if you haven't read the title of the video yet, is called GP2040CE, so that's, a, that's just an open source uh, joystick controller firmware. Now the reason why, why I would, I, you get something like this instead of something like the Brook Vite board or something is because a simple chip like this is really, is really relatively much, much cheaper than something like a Brook PCB. Because after all, it's a very simple microcontroller and uh, notice all the legs and everything have to be, you have to solder everything yourself onto it. But uh, that's kind of 
part of the fun if you're trying to build your own board. The other, other than using uh, the different uh, micro Raspberry Pi Pico, I also got these uh, terminal, these uh, wire terminals. You can see that I instead of using uh, pin headers, I solder in terminal heads, which is something like this. Okay, so you can buy them in a different number of blocks. So I just bought because this uh, chip has like twenty pins on each side. So I just bought two. I just bought them in tens and just squished them together to make to to make my connectors. So the good re the main reason why I did this was because again I was lazy and I didn't want to have to keep soldering in the wires when I was figuring out where to put them. So having screw terminals just make it easier for me to make modifications and repairs if I have to. Okay, so now let's take a look at one of the how the switch assemblies. Okay, we'll just take this one out. So this here is a switch assembly. Uh, the, I designed the keyboard holder myself. So this one is meant to fit Carl. How do you how do you pronounce this name? Carl low profile uh, low profile choco keys. I think they call it. I'm using the linear version, and I got some transparent keycaps for it. Okay. So everything was just hand soldered myself directly by soldering the, the I just push the keys into the frame and then I'm just soldering everything directly. So I have I don't really have any formal training or education about handling soldering irons, but uh, my experience when doing all this is that first of all, get a good soldering iron. I got this which is the, I think they call it the Minware TS80P. So this is a very interesting soldering iron because it runs off USB-C. It runs off USB-C PD. So if you plugged in, uh, you can just use a, a USB-C PD power bank and uh, plug it in and you're ready to go. And the good thing is, it heats up really fast and you can even see the temperature and everything here on the status. It heats up really fast. So it's very good for me to like solder something, turn it off, do, do, do the wiring a bit and then solder it again. So this uh, uh, soldering iron like this is uh, really indispensable for it because it makes the job much easier. Then for the patch wires, for the wires to wire into the keys. Um, so you notice that they are, I actually kind of try to go with some color coding. So there's like a orange stripe and then an orange cable. And then there's like a, there's a blue stripe and then a blue cable. Now you might be wondering where, where, how to get so much uh, colored wires. Um, of course you could just order them online. But uh, again, if you're going to have to order lots of different colors of wires, remember the punch keys are basically eight different buttons. It might be a bit expensive or it might be hard, hard to just get simple wires of different colors so easily. So what I actually did was, you can use this. So this is some old uh, ethernet cable I have lying around, this network cable, and uh, there are actually uh, eight wires inside these things. So there's a lot of small little wires inside this, and um, because we don't really have to transfer data over it, you can just find some cheap or simple Cat5 cable lying around your house or maybe do some dumpster diving maybe and find Cat5 cable, okay? Don't, please don't salvage a fresh Cat5e or Cat6 cable for it because, uh, oh, that would be such a waste because we, we, we don't want, we don't need the shielding. So what you do is you take a network cable, you cut it, cut off the head, 
and then we can see that okay there's some wires in there so what you do next do is that we're gonna just and get some scissors so this part is actually a bit annoying what you do want to do is you want to so this the cables are just inside the larger cable so you just push a scissor in cut out the the sheath so you want to just keep cutting cutting the sheath and then just pull the individual wires out so you can see they are so eight pairs of cable nicely color coded very helpful and useful when we are wiring something like this so it it might be a bit hard to just to for you to just remember when you're going through the the sheath you don't want to accidentally cut the cut the small wires because uh, you just be left that would be irritating um, with this I don't know whether this is uh, whether this is true for other cables but what I found out is that for this particular cable let me see if I can find it hmm it's not there let me check okay so here um, in this particular there's this little string here I think it's a lead wire or something that they use to pull the cable when they're assembling it um, so the interesting thing here is this so the, there's a small thread here this is like um, I mean if you do cooking this would be like the the intern in the organ for a prawn or something so what you do is I'm just gonna get enough length to it and so I can get a grip on it okay so I what I found out I can just pull this cable this little string and if I it could be because my sh shielding is just weak but if I if I just carefully yoink on this cable this string uh, note that note that be careful you might get cut by the string so be careful you just carefully and you can just string it like a fish a uh, prawn see you can easily just yank on it and 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 it will just cut it so this is definitely much more easier than trying to just keep cutting the, the sheath using the knife okay i'm, I'm just you don't want it you don't want your and it's a twisted pair cable so notice how it's twisting around the edge around the whole cable okay so here i've done it i've gutted a network cable and i now have a whole bunch of uh, colored wires now this is not an argument on how to get cheap wires okay if you buy in bulk there are definitely cheaper ways to get a wire but unless you're doing this at scale if you're someone like me who is just trying to DIY something and you just want a bunch of eight color remember there are eight colors here okay you want a bunch of eight colored wires i this is just the easiest way to get like eight eight wires of eight different colors uh as, if you don't want to just like buy multi-meter long spools of each of them so one question i would like to ask any of you who have more experience dealing with compo with uh, component soldering is that so the main the main annoyance that I feel after making a few of these things is the ground wire array for the buttons so the ground wire needs to go to each of the buttons to be each of the switches to be simplified so you have to like just connect all the grounds together but again, because I'm just directly soldering wires to the terminals, it's really unwieldy to handle uh, handle the wires on the for the ground because you have to like put two of them together to solder it on one leg. Um, is does anyone have any uh, recommendation or comments on how to actually solder these uh, easier? Please don't tell me use a printer circuit board because you know I'm I'm a bit lazy and I just want to make something done as fast as possible. 
Okay, and uh, there's the last set of buttons. And uh, I can take away the prototype board. So again, this is just acrylic, uh, three three mm thick acrylic. So three mm is not too thin, but it still doesn't feel as rigid. So that's why I don't use it for my final, final items. For the final one, I'm using this thing. So it's a white five mm thick. I click. Uh, okay, let's go for the peel. Ah, dang. Come on. Okay. Okay, so we've got a board ready, so it's time to put in the switches. Now, I'm not just I'm not gonna just put the switches down like this because if I put it down like this, I have to put the the sticky stuff around the edges, so they will just pop and uh, show up. Which okay, that does look maybe that's not doesn't look too nice and it might attract too much dust. So what I'm gonna do is that's why I printed out these uh, feet. So I'm going to just put the, putty, the sticky stuff here and then just put it down and then the switch covers over it. So I'm going to put all these plans on printables.com and uh, these are quite a tight fit. I, I mean I printed them to print, I designed them to print best on my printer. So if the feet are having trouble going in, maybe you might want to just shrink it down by 5% or something. It doesn't need to be snug. The main thing is that it's just a holder to like to provide a grip for the keys to hold into place. So here I'm gonna take the sticky stuff and we'll just take a little bit here. Flatten it out. Uh, don't need too much. The keys actually don't, especially for the top row, the keys don't move that much out. So, okay, I got the things in and I'm just going to put it in. Smoosh it down. Okay. Check the fit. And then the, if you just put it down like this, obviously the keys might, when you just put, put down the thing like this, okay, but these went in pretty tightly, so I guess I don't need to, so if, if, the, if the keys don't go down tight enough, you might just want to put some, Sticky stuff on the frame, on the top of the frame, so that when you push the buttons down, they will just stick to it and it will just go down completely. You just hold it more securely, but this is good. This isn't moving that much. And again, you don't press this, this set any, too much anyway. Okay, so I have the wires here. Now, what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to just use a zip tie to organize it slightly, the leads coming out. Okay, so the zip ties are here just to manage the, the wires a bit as they come out of the opening so they don't flare up that much. Okay, so the buttons are secured and uh, we're going to put in the chip now. 
So the chip is held, will be held in place with this, uh, this piece here, which I'm just going to stick here. Uh, then the main thing is that this, this thing just has a brace so that it will, it will be, it will make it so that I can just easily hold the chip at the ends and they can, so when I'm inserting and pulling out the network cable, so I just need to hold it like this, hold it like this on its ends. And when I pull and insert in the cable, so I just made a simple slat, slat like this. Or my first, in my first design, I just basically just stuck the chip in like that. Uh, well, it worked, but it was a bit loose when I, uh, when I pulled and plugged the, plugged the cable in. So this should help make it a bit easier. Another interesting thing about this piece is that all my other things were designed using OpenSCAD, but this is the first thing I actually completely designed in FreeCAD. Um, well, let's see where it goes from here. Okay, now to get back, now to wire back everything. Remember, luckily, I have already written down which of the wires go where, so this shouldn't take too long. So, I've wired back everything. Now, you might notice that the wires are still, some of them are still a bit too long and still not very tidy. But basically what I like to do now is that I'm just going to test the board for a while and make sure that everything is okay as in the connect that putting all these wires didn't break any of them. And then I will start, I will manage and uh, cut down, cut the wires down to length so that the, so that it will be long enough to, to work with it. So that it will look tidier after, after, after I manage and cut it down. Okay, so now, now that we tested it, the thing seems to be working fine, layout seems to be okay. I'm going to just, maybe I'll move the, the bottom here a little bit, but uh, generally this layout is fine. So I can start trimming the wire so that it doesn't bulge out so much, okay. I'm still going to leave some slack so that it can move a bit if I want to, but uh, not so much. So the way I, I clean up the wire, I go about cleaning up the wire is just I'm going to unscrew the wires one by one and then just get the length. So I'm going to unscrew this. Then I'm just going to prime the length. So I'm going to say like I want it to be like this. This would be the ideal length. So we're still going to leave, leave some slack because remember we have to cut the wire stripping and then and then it will go in. We just don't want too much of it to, to flail out. And of course, if anything goes wrong when stripping the, the wire, I will have to like strip it again. So I can't really, I, I really need to leave, leave some leeway for it. And that's why I said it's important to get a good wire stripper, okay? You don't really don't know what's going to happen. Okay, I'm this about uh, here. Okay, strip the wires. Lucky anything went wrong, then I'm gonna just cut it down. And then. Put it in. And now I'm going to repeat it for everything else. Okay, so here it is. I've, this is after the wire cleanup, so there isn't any things like just bunching around too high so that They'll affect my hands when I'm playing, and uh, I should be able to put it into the case a bit easier and everything. Okay, so I'm, this is a bit loose. I might just put some blue tag on it to just stabilize it some more. Uh, but other than that, yep, I, this is it. This is Marauder's Fight Board Tournament Edition. Okay.
see you on the next video.